course up through 10. Bob will be finishing in 10th spot. Our thanks again. The telemetry service is provided by General Motors Engine Division and Service Technology. Todd Hamilton, Craig Palmer, Dave Brooks. Sports Center follows us. Be sure to stay tuned tomorrow. Hi, I'm Todd Hamilton from CPC Engineering. I'd like to show you some of the uh, creativity and technology at work in General Motors today. Together, they are providing new tools for engineering for the development and service of a new generation of GM products. The uh, CPC telemetry system that you're about to see matured very quickly during the Corvette challenge of the past. The new tools that are in use today began as prototypes in Phoenix in Arizona in April of 1989. The scenes that you are about to see were taken from the ESPN race broadcast of Phoenix, Arizona and is typical of in-car camera shots with a voiceover comments of a person coming from a location trackside but away from the action. The vehicle speeds that are called out are strictly a guess. Replay for the action. Now watch Rutherford coming out of three down the street. Look how close he is. 120 miles an hour. And you can see on the Sony Handycam shot, look at his wheel moving. He's crossed up and sideways through corner one as they go to corner two and then take a bang he hits brackets and you see the car moving around 120 miles now they're behaving like it's traffic the 1989 dallas grand prix was the first espn television show to include engine and vehicle data along with the in-car camera recordings the video and engine data were aligned by time the engine data came from a new experimental vsm 20 unit developed during this series like everything else over the years, technology has certainly made its mark on the world of motorsport. We've gone from film to video to coverage of live events to in-car cameras that give you that driver's perspective of a race. Where can we possibly take you next? This computer-equipped van represents the next technical breakthrough. What General Motors has developed is a data acquisition system that actually monitors the performance of the car as it happens on the track. Now this takes us into a whole new dimension, the ability to transform data into a readily understood format. You're seeing here the vehicle speed, there the brakes are applied. Over here we have the engine RPMs, the gear position, the throttle position, and all of this while the race is actually going on. And we're going to show you on screen some information. Here he is, 78, 79, 80 miles an hour. You can see the revs, and he's in third gear as we look through a point of view shot in, shot in Gelati's car. Look at the gas pedal. It's a full throttle now. He changes gear, drops back down again. I love this, John. Uh, talk about technical breakthroughs. Uh, this is a knockout for uh, specifically the race viewer. I get a feeling we're going to see a lot more of this sort of thing in future race coverage. 70 miles an hour down the uh, main drag in Addison, Texas, and the cops aren't taking any pictures. At Sears Point, other uses w for combined vehicle and engine data with in-car camera recordings were explored. Well, Peter Lockhart, uh, how do we attack Sears Point? Uh, let's start with corner one. Well, corner one at Sears is a very fast left-hander going up the hill. It's taken flat out from the start-finish line, and uh, it's a very challenging corner. When you come up to corner two, you are really going very fast. Uh, corner two is a sharp right-hander, and it's blind. As you go up over the top, you crease the speed bumps. As you approach corner three, you're flat out in third gear. You hit the brakes very hard, and as you get into the dip, you go hard left against the speed bumps. From three to three A is a small rise to the right. Corner four, you're approaching about 80 miles an hour. Uh, you brake a little bit earlier than you think you should, and as soon as you're out of the corner, you're shifting into fourth gear. Uh, five is a sweeping right-hander, taken flat out. You have to stay to the immediate right-hand side of the track. You're approaching 100 miles an hour as you go to the left-hand side of the track, and uh, you go up to the bridge of six. You find yourself falling down the famous carousel at Sears Point. As you exit six, you're now flat in fourth gear, and as you go down a straight, you can see corner seven in the distance. You get into the corner seven area, uh, you brake and downshift, uh, it's a hard hairpin, one of the two on the track, and corner seven is taken in second gear. Once you exit seven, you upshift to third and to fourth, and then you have a series of S's, corners eight, eight A. And as you exit eight A, you're on the fastest part of the track. You are flying now as you go down through a sweeper to the left called corner nine, and you approach the braking area for corner 10, a very hard right-hander. 
At that area, you're doing about 110 miles an hour. It's very important to brake the car in a straight line. As you go through 10 in fourth gear, you use all the track to the left. You accelerate up again to approximately 110, 111 miles an hour, where you again smoothly downshift through fourth, through third, down to second, and very carefully go around corner 11, which leads you onto the front straight. You use all of the road to the left by the pit wall as you exit, and you accelerate up through the gears again past the start-finish line, heading again to corner one. In 1990, record attempts were made at Fort Stockton using the L98 and the LT5 Corvettes. Live telemetry was used during the Fort Stockton record runs on both of these cars. The display was videotaped, but the main purpose was to continuously monitor the vehicles for the safety of the drivers. Consistently traveling near 180 miles per hour, almost the length of a football field each second, the ZR1 continued its flawless performance into the night. Staffed by General Motors service and technology engineers, telemetry system was online throughout the trial to monitor the car's performance. Technicians could even detect the wiggling of a driver's toes against the accelerator. At approximately 10 p.m., 2,106 miles into the run, the ZR1 had set the 12-hour record at an average speed, including pit stops, of over 175 miles per hour. One thing about it, it couldn't have been done if it hadn't been a shovel light. thing about it, it couldn't have been done if it hadn't been a shovel light. The first known live broadcast of vehicle data along with in-car camera shots was successfully done on August 11, 1990 in the Watkins Glen, New York. The telemetry was used to continuously provide vehicle data from Paul Genelosi's Oldsmobile Trans Am vehicle to ESPN for the commentator's use and for the broadcasting. Now we're looking at some of the telemetry which we'll be having on board the Paul Genelosi car. Lansing, Michigan driver inside his Oldsmobile. What you'll see is exactly what the reads there. Miles per hour, RPMs. You've never seen it before. The brake on the left side, you'll see whenever he touches the brake, that will light up. He's in first gear. You see a, on the right side of your screen, the yellow ball circling the number one, indicating first gear. And of course, the arrow moving up and down in the middle of that picture indicates the accelerator. Now when he takes the green flag, that accelerator goes all the way to the top. Watch the RPM climb. And the green flag waves to look inside. That pedal is still on the floor. He flips it just a minute to change gears. Coming back to fourth gear. 145, 150 miles an hour. Up in fifth gear now. 157, 58 on the brakes. Watch the RPM and speed go down. He checked from 170 to what? 97 miles an hour. Back to fourth gear. 90. That's what he's about when he's going to go through the corner. Now he's accelerating down the back straightaway. Just came down on a turn five. Going up to turn six. It'll be a hard left. Andrew, he's still in fourth gear. Up to 140 miles an hour. He's going to have to slow back to fifth gear. Going back to fourth and out of turn six. They say he's quite busy inside the car. Paul Genelosi, known as being a challenger here in Trans Am Series. He's wide open back on the pedal. Once again, the telemetry in Genelosi's car. There's just a foot cam watches his feet. He's off playing with the throttle. Playing with it. Now, all the way. See the accelerator all the way to the top. He's wide open. Shifted gears just burped it a little bit. Now, hard on the brakes. Clutch. Picture. Still in fourth gear, and you see the accelerator wide open again as it goes to the top. You see the miles per hour going up and down, and of course the RPMs go up and down as well. How about that? Why 
wide open, using a little bit of a break. As you take a look at the top 10 finishers, John Kernan, Nifel, of course, up through 10. Bob Sobey finishing in 10th spot. Our thanks again. The telemetry service is provided by General Motors Engine Division and Service Technology. Todd Hamilton, Craig Palmer, Dave Brooks. Sports Center follows us. Be sure to stay tuned tomorrow at 1 p.m. for the fifth annual Budweiser at the Glen. For John Kernan, Benny Parsons, and Ned Jarrett, I'm Jerry Punch. So long, everybody. Thank you.